Hi, uh, good job, everyone. I wanted to share with you a few thoughts on the first uh, Parsha in Sefer Shemot. And in order to understand this first Parsha, I want to start with an interesting experiment. It's actually a fun experiment. The next time you find yourself talking to another person, um, randomly pick a word. Listen carefully to the words they're using and randomly pick a word uh, that they use and smile when they mention that word. And each time they say that word, make sure to smile again, not before, not after. And you'll see something very fascinating take place. Um, what will happen is the person will subconsciously realize that he's pleasing you when he uses that word, and he'll start using it more and more often. And so therefore, by smiling, um, you've encouraged him to behave a certain way. Now, where it really gets fun is if you want to mess with someone, you find when they mention a word that's not really very common and not something that they would like to use very often, um, but smile as soon as you hear it. And hopefully they'll say it again, maybe even not that day, but the next day, smile again. Um, and make sure you smile each time you hear that word. Uh, and over a week period of time, you'll see that they start to use it more often. And if you do it long enough, they'll actually enter it into their repertoire of words. They'll start using it all the time. Uh, even in places when it's not appropriate to use, but subconsciously they think they're pleasing people as a result um, of that word, um, and they'll start using words that they've never really used before. Anyway, it's a fun experiment to try uh, and mess with and mess with your friends. Now, the reason why I mention this is because I think this experiment and the impact it has might be able to help explain one of the challenges uh, we have in understanding something about the beginning of this week's Parsha. And what I'm really referring to is Moshe's name. The name, of course, that we call Moshe or Moses is Moshe. It's from the name, it's from the event when Batya, the daughter of Paro, uh, finds the baby in the Nile and she draws him out and saves his life. Uh, and the Egyptian word for drawing a person out uh, in this regard is uh, rooted in the word Moshe. Now, what's interesting is the Midrash tells us there are many other names, at least 10 other names, that Moshe um, could have had and that other people, like his parents and his grandparents, uh, used to call him by. Uh, so I'll just give you a few quick ones. For example, there's the name Yered. Yered, which means descent, going down. Miriam gave him this name, Miriam, his sister, on the account that she went down to the Nile to see exactly how Moshe was doing and to help with his escape. Um, uh, in the Nile from the decree of Paro who wanted all the male babies uh, murdered. Alternatively, some people say that Moshe brought down the Torah at Har Sinai, and so therefore he had that name Yerid of going down. Another name, um, a little bit more popular, Avigdor. Avigdor means father of, Avi, or master of, uh, Dur, a fence, that Moshe, according to one Midrash, Yahut Memlez, had created a fence around um, Paro's decree and had prevented Paro from being able to actually kill all the Jews. Uh, and this name was given to Moshe by his by his uh, grandfather, Kahat. Chaver is another name. Chaver, which means friend, but it also means chibur, to connect, uh, a companion. This name was given because Moshe connected the Jewish people uh, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with God. So he's a, a connector. Some say also that Moshe um, is the result of his parents, Amram and Yochavit, coming back together. After they had separated, they came back together um, on the advice of Miriam, and so therefore he connected them. Uh, there is a name, Yekutiel, from, from the word Kaveh, which means hope, that Yochavit had great hope in the birth of Moshe, that he would survive, and that he would be able to live and lead the Jewish people. Um, just going through a list of other names that I have here. Uh, Tuvia, also for Moshe, means goodness. Shemaya, Shemaya is a name based on the hope that God will shema, that God will hear the prayers of the Jewish people thanks to Moshe's uh, behavior. Uh, ben Avitar, uh, Avitar from the word Vitor, which means to, to uh, uh, pardon or relinquish, that Moshe inspired God to pardon the Jewish people 
uh, after the sin of the golden calf. So you have many different names that are out there. There are others as well. What's interesting is uh, many of these names have very nice and deep meaning. Uh, and more than that, they were given to Moshe by uh, people very significant in his life. His, his parents, his, his grandfather, his sibling. Um, and the question I have is, why is it that the name Moshe really stuck? And we can strengthen the question, because Moshe was, is the name given by the daughter of Paro. Um, and it's an Egyptian word. It's an Egyptian name having to do with drawing out of the water. Um, so why is that the one that stuck? And if you want to make it even a little stronger, um, Yosef, Joseph, was given an Egyptian name as well during his time there. Um, but no one calls uh, calls uh, Yosef by Safnat uh, Paner, his Egyptian name, which perhaps means something to the effect of master of mysteries or explainer of uh, mysteries, which Yosef had. So why is it that uh, why is it that Moshe, the Egyptian name, sticks, but not with others? So the traditional answer, and I think it's a correct answer and a compelling answer, is that it has to do with gratitude. Uh, the Jewish people, the word Yehuda, Yehudim, uh, means gratefulness. It comes from the idea of uh, expressing thankfulness. And so that's what Jews are meant to do and what we're supposed to be all about. And so Moshe, by using that name, um, reminds us of the great act of kindness that Batya, the daughter of Paro, engaged in to save his life, and it's a way of expressing gratitude to her for risking her life in order to save his. I think that's the right answer, but I think going to go a step further when we talk about gratitude to really understand why the name Moshe is, is really so significant in this regard. And here I want to return to the experiment that I started with. I said that when we smile, when we behave a certain way, we might be able to inspire someone to act a certain way, in this case, using a certain selection of words. Are there other things we can do or say that might inspire other people, perhaps even subconsciously, to act a certain way? And I'd like to say just the answer, the answer is yes. Um, for example, the names we use to call people might conjure up certain images in that person's mind that would inspire them to behave a certain way. Uh, certainly I know this from uh, in, that's been my own experience. I remember when I was a high school student and I came to Israel for the first time on a teen learning program, and I have no idea why, still to this day, but uh, some of the kids started calling me Mad Dog. Uh, I'm not a Mad Dog. I'm a relatively calm, hopefully logical, rational, uh, reasonable, sensible individual. But for whatever reason, they started calling me Mad Dog. And I have to admit that sometimes I began to live up to uh, this nickname. And so if we were playing some type of a sport, you know, football, basketball, whatever it may be, I lived up to being Mad Dog, which uh, usually had me maybe acting a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more pushy than normally uh, I would have if I was not called uh, that name. Years and years later, I've now moved to Israel. I'm a rabbi. I'm old. Uh, I started playing basketball with some younger guys who much better, much faster than me. Um, and here, too, I saw the influence of a name on how I behaved. Uh, here, I no longer have the nickname of Mad Dog, but rather Rabbi, as in, hey, pass me the ball, Rabbi, or quick, get back on defense, Rabbi, um, or even the opposing team. They'd say, hey, I got the Rabbi, cover the Rabbi, you know, don't let the Rabbi shoot. So I have to tell you that as one gets older and starts playing with guys who are faster and younger and stronger and better, at the game of basketball, one of the things that some people do, myself included, is we begin to cheat. We begin to foul a little bit more, play a little bit more dirty, right? Um, <laughs> be a little bit more physical, hold them back so they can't run, so we don't have to run. Uh, we begin to do that because that's the only skills we, we have at this point in time, certainly the only skills that I had. But I found it much more uncomfortable to play that way and do that when people kept calling me rabbi, right? It's harder to cheat when you keep getting called rabbi. And so names do influence, the names we are called can influence how we behave. And this is what I think might help explain why the name Moshe took off. My guess is that as a young kid, if he had many names, people called him by the variety of different names. Um, and perhaps when people would call him Moshe, Moshe subconsciously 
it behaved slightly differently when he heard that name, right? Because what does that name really mean? So no doubt, if he would recall that it was the name given to him by Pacha, who saves his life, and being a survivor, being rescued, necessarily reminds him that he also is a very fortunate individual. That while he survived, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of other young babies for no other reason than they were Jewish were murdered. And so no doubt he would start thinking every time that name was used, if he stopped for a moment to think the or origin story of that name, he would begin to realize that he's one in a million, that he has certain obligations. Right? As a survivor, um, he has to be the voice of all the aspirations and hopes and values of those hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people who didn't have a voice, that he has to fulfill that role. And no doubt he was probably inspired to take on greater responsibility, to aspire for more, to care for the underdog more, to watch out for them, because he realized it's part of his responsibility of being a survivor. Uh, but Benny Friedman, who uh, survived this borrow terror attack, pizza terror attack in Jerusalem a number of years ago, was once discussing with another survivor, and there is such a thing as survivor's guilt, and, and the individual he's talking to was saying, you know, why did I survive, and the person next to me uh, not survive? And he tells the story that he remembers reading about an individual uh, who was drowning, and a stranger saw him drowning and came and rescued him, and the person said, Mr., you know, thank you so much for saving my life, to which the stranger replied, Let's hope it was worth saving. Um, let's hope that you do something with your life to justify that risk. And I think that while survivors may feel guilty, perhaps, of why they survived, they shouldn't, but perhaps they do, they also could be motivated at the exact same time. And my sense is that this is perhaps what happened with Moshe, that the name took upon a life of itself that inspired him and then it becomes a virtual, uh, virtuous circle. He would hear the name perhaps react slightly differently. People saw that they benefited from his courage that was inspired, and they continued with that name in the same way the smile encouraged the person to use the same word. And so Moshe makes it his name, more so than anything else through his actions and through his courage. Now, of course, all of us today do not have the same experience as Moshe, but we certainly can look at our lives and realize that we have much to be grateful for and how fortunate we are. Whether it's the families we were born into, the fact that uh, we're free, that we have a state of Israel. Many of us live here in the state of Israel. We're able to fulfill this biblical prophecy. And we should feel so fortunate uh, and, and, and so lucky. And that, of course, should not end there, but with just an expression of the gratitude, but actually realize that that, that puts upon us a certain degree of responsibility and debt and obligation to pay it forward and to provide assistance and to help those who don't have that voice, who don't have that good fortune, because we then ultimately becomes their representatives. Shabbat Shalom.